more than anything else so I figured I'd do quite an in-depth uh, video about the subject. I'll start off with some examples of the more kind of common arpeggio shapes and then I'll talk a bit more about kind of technique and exercises and way to improve it. So sweep picking is essentially just like a fluid raking motion or strumming motion across all of the strings usually combined with um, some kind of arpeggio that the left hand's doing and it's a really good way of um, doing really wide intervallic leaps and covering a lot of ground in a, a very short space of time. It is quite a handy tool to have in your arsenal um, even if you don't use it all the time or in a very conventional way, it's just a very good kind of technique and uh, really does build up a lot of control in both of your hands and it's really good for just coordination in general. I personally struggled with it for ages and then just one day it clicked and I could just do it. So um, you just have to kind of be persistent and bear with it. So I'll start off by showing you a really basic A minor arpeggio. Your root notes here on the 12th fret on the A string. Um, but because it's kind of an unusual grouping of notes, I add in a fifth below the A which is an E note. Adding in this note just really helps the flow of doing these arpeggios, especially if you want to kind of loop it over and over again. Um, if you think of it kind of like six tuplets or triplets, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So adding this note in here, even though that's not the root note, the root note's here, just really helps kind of stabilize and, and make it sound a bit better. I'll play that with the tab. I'll do that again slower. So one of the other more common shapes I'm going to show you is a major shape. This one's going to be a B flat major one. And same again, I'm going to add a fifth below the note, so that's going to be an F. And that sounds like this. A good way to remember this shape is like playing a C chord, but barred. So if you kind of play it like this. Again, this just really helps when you want to sync up with a metronome and you don't hit like six tuplets, like I said. So that with the tab. So there are a few ways you can pick these arpeggios. A lot of people do a downstroke, hammer on, down, 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 hammer on, pull off, up, 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 pull off. Uh, the way I pick this, which is slightly different to a lot of people, is doing alternate picking on the A string. Uh, this kind of helps just give it a bit more of a percussive sound and a bit more control over the kind of flow of it. I do leave the high E string as a hammer on and pull off. So what I'm doing is down, up, down, 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 hammer on, pull off, up, 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 and then back to the start, so down, up. So when it comes to exercises for sweet picking, I've seen a few of the kind of chromatic kind of things and uh, for me I just think the best thing to do is practice the arpeggios that I just went over to a metronome and uh, you know just doing the five note per string ones is just the best thing to get you really used to doing sweep picking and, and get you in the zone. So as I've mentioned in a previous video the best way to practice sweep picking to really develop your technique is doing it really slowly and probably way slower than you even think you might need to be doing it. So again like I said in this other video I kind of compared it to you know, Tai Chi or yoga, very slow but controlled movements. The reason for this is sweep picking is about doing a really fluid rake or strumming motion, not plucking the strings like this. And it's really hard to maintain that really fluid movement and timing it just right so you're syncing up with the left hand, you're syncing up with every note that you want to be hitting, but you're not plucking, you're just keeping a consistent movement happening. And getting that timed right and having the control to do that is actually a lot harder to do at a slow speed than when you're trying to do it fast because you're not really relying on gravity to do the work or, or just really easy movements. The slower it is, the more control you build up in you know, all the tendons in your wrist and, and the muscles in your hand and that kind of stuff. So practicing it slowly really does help build up the control but when you do want to start to increase the BPM you'll be way more controlled uh, and cleaner because you'll be way more uh, aware of kind of unwanted string noises when you're practicing really slow and you'll really be able to pay attention to every little aspect uh, of the arpeggio and getting that control on your right hand is the only way to do it is by doing it slowly. Um, like I said, doing it 
doing it like this and being really controlled is way harder than just moving at a consistent motion like that. So another thing I mentioned in this previous video was the benefits of practicing with both a clean sound and a distorted sound, um, especially for sweep picking. So if you practice with a clean sound, you can really hear the um, consistency in your picking, the coordination between hands, and uh, you know how clean your playing is overall. But practicing with a distorted sound, you can hear unwanted string noise, scrapes, scuffs, all kinds of unwanted noise that you don't always hear when you're just um, playing on clean or, or unplugged. So both have their benefits and it's kind of worth switching between the two. So a lot of guitarists new to sweet picking, or um, I've had a lot of guitar teachers recommend this to people that are new to sweet picking, is if you take this arpeggio shape and just play the high notes on the high three strings. And uh, this is a good thing to practice, but I recommend just doing across all five strings more than that, just because it really gets you used to the sweeping motion, uh, and you get more of a chance to really get used to doing it across more strings. It is good to practice both, but if you are just going to hone in on one, I just recommend doing the, the full arpeggio shape. Another useful shape that's just on the high three strings is this diminished shape. The cool thing about this shape and diminished scales and any other kind of symmetrical scale is you can just move this one up every three frets and it will still sound good and it's just the exact same shape just because that's the way the scale is. So those are kind of the basics of sweet picking, there's no real kind of cheat or uh, easy way around it. The best thing to do is take one of those basic arpeggio shapes, practice it really slowly with a metronome, paying attention to being really clean and consistent with your picking. And just don't worry about speed because once you do get used to doing that and you've just done it for quite a long time and put the hours into just being controlled, then when you do start to try and get faster, it'll be a lot easier to do um, you know, than just going straight in at the deep end.